Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about a playoff update. Some very, very contentious conversations going on out there in Texas right now. It seems like we'll have a resolution to the new format in 2026 and going forward by the end of the month, but we will keep you all updated on all of that. But let's jump into NIL because there was a very interesting bill that is coming out of Utah right now um, that essentially is the NCAA rules, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, Front Office Sports' Margaret Fleming did a great article about this. And uh, in the article, they talked about, first of all, the bill itself. Um, And there is a ton of different uh, new things that are going on and some not so new uh, necessarily. First of all, the number one thing in this bill is NIL partnerships over $600 in the state of Utah would have to be disclosed to the university, which is a a rule that was in place uh, by the NCAA that um, was recently shut down by a federal judge for possibly violating antitrust laws. So very interesting uh, move by Utah. I, I wonder if this is something that could have the same fate if uh you know a student takes exception to that or decides to go against that uh it'll be interesting to see if we have a similar um court case coming down the barrel around utah but uh, another part of the bill is um it would ban student athletes from having any partnerships with alcohol marijuana or tobacco products vaping or e-cigarettes controlled substances in any way gambling betting uh, sexually oriented businesses or some firearms, at least the ones that they as students cannot buy. So a lot of restrictions, a lot of things that they have to keep their minds on as uh, young student athletes, you know, worrying about 10 different things at once. So they now have to worry about these new rules. And uh, this bill has rolled through the House and the Senate in Utah, and it looks like it's going to sail through the past the last obstacle as well. The governor um, has been very, very vocal, uh, including last Friday, talking about how he approves of this bill. He believes it is a good thing um, for the future of NIL in his state. And so it looks like it is going to get signed into law and it will go into effect May 1st, which obviously is prime recruiting time. Tons of stuff going on around all of those campuses. So Utah and BYU have some very interesting new things that they have to teach their kids, teach their recruits, and uh, hopefully not, you know, suffer in recruiting because of this. Uh, But one of the bill's sponsor, Jordan uh, Teuscher, uh, was trying to mirror the NIL rules uh, put in place by the NCAA. He feels like those rules made sense. Um, However, he also said he doesn't necessarily believe that it should be up to the states to make rules because having different rules in every single state, especially in the world of the transfer portal, is a very dangerous proposition and could get a lot of kids into trouble when they didn't even think they would be in trouble or maybe they shouldn't be in trouble. So a lot of different layers to this that uh, need to be put into uh, thought when you're creating all of these different rules and regulations because something like that um, where Utah felt the need as a state to step up and uh, get some good ideas or get some real regulations over NIL. Um, The need for that is something that you wish wouldn't have to take place, I guess is the best way to say it. You wish that these states didn't have to get involved and we had a governing body, whether it was the NCAA or the College Bowl playoff or a totally new entity altogether. You wish there was an ability to get common sense rules in place and have everyone follow them and them all be uniform. But I think um, it seems like there's not really that on the horizon, at least not um, glaringly on the horizon, as I guess. Uh, There has been a lot of desire for people um, in Congress to step up and create federal laws around NIL It doesn't seem like they're anywhere close to taking action, and that makes sense. It is an election year. There is a lot of stuff going on in this country and around the world, so it doesn't seem like this is remotely towards the top of uh, top of their plate, and it doesn't seem like it should be. So um, it seems like we are going to have to 
either other states are going to have to jump in the same way Utah did, or we're going to have to get some type of governing body that can put in rules that make sense uh, and that can be enforceable and not enforceable in a way that is against the rules, <laughs> that is uh, that is against antitrust laws. So there are, there are tons of uh, layers here. There's tons of things to worry about. Um, but for right now, Utah felt like they had to do something. And what they did was one of the more restrictive NIL laws in the country. Um, and it'll hurt, hurt recruiting in some sense at, in Utah. All of that being said, Utah and BYU are two schools that already have some of these uh, NIL rules in place um, because they have certain rules on their campuses. They don't, um, on BYU at least, uh, they don't allow alcohol, so can't have any NIL deals with alcohol. So a lot of the, you know, controlled substances, marijuana, tobacco products, those type of rules, gambling and betting, those have been in place, it seems, uh, for quite some time at Utah and BYU, at least since NIL has become a thing. So some of this will not be new. Some of this will not necessarily change uh, the world that Utah and BYU students live in. But um, in terms of recruiting, it is a totally new thing that you have to tell a 17 or 16 year old kid that when you come here, these are the certain things that you're going to have to follow. These are the certain things that you're going to have to worry about on top of doing football. And I think that's something that might be a deterrent to these kids. Obviously, you know, student athletes have to worry about incredible amounts of things throughout their day, whether it's practice or film study or class or I don't know why class was third there. Class should be number one. But um, tons of stuff that they need to worry about on top of NIL and all of this stuff. And if you add new rules, it creates a whole nother layer. So student athletes are going to have to be very diligent in the dealings that they make and the people that they're trusting to make these dealings for them. Uh, schools will have to make sure that they educate their athletes as soon as possible and as vigorously as possible because you don't want to be caught in these crazy NIL lawsuits and you don't want your student athletes getting in trouble for violating these rules that are very new and uh, some of them might not fully understand the rules. So you got to make sure they understand it as quickly po as quickly as possible. But going back to the recruiting side of this, uh, Utah and BYU, this is going to affect them. Um, I don't necessarily think it's going to affect them a ton, but you never really know. There's always uh, a worry. And one of the big things here is Utah is one of the first states to jump in and to say something about NIL and to do something this concrete about NIL. So other states are going to counter. There will be multiple states that will release their own NIL um, rules and regulations, their own laws, their own guidelines around NIL in general. So who's to say, you know, Florida or Texas or New York or whoever is not able to create a law that is not quite as restrictive, that is a little bit nicer to the student athletes, that gives you a little bit more leeway and a little bit more time to worry about football instead of worrying about um, the different contracts you're signing and everything like that. So there is going to be a very interesting um, little battle, I, I suppose, between different lawmakers in different uh, states because these college football programs bring in a ton of money to the state. There's no two ways about that. And if you cut them off at the ankles um, in recruiting and uh, all of that type of stuff in NIL, you're going to hurt the amount of money that is getting brought in by these teams and then hurt the amount of money that's going to the state. So all of this is a domino effect, and it'll be interesting to see how other states counter. It'll be interesting to see how or if um, other states counter, that is. And I think um, one of the things that is kind of saving Utah in some of this craziness is uh, it doesn't seem that they will have to disclose, or it doesn't seem like the dealings that they make or the deals that they sign will become public record as they would before. So for a long time, uh, pretty much since the inception of NIL, when you sign a deal above, I believe $600 was the moniker. It might be a little bit more than that, but um, 
those would immediately go into records and then they would become public record after X amount of time. I'm not sure exactly how long, but um, that would not be the case in Utah. So all of your dealings would be under wraps, essentially, at the university level. So a very interesting uh, little tidbit in there. He, uh, the sponsor of the bill, just felt like it wasn't anyone's business. These are private contracts that should stay private. So it's a very interesting last layer to kind of throw on there. But recruiting is going to be affected in Utah. I don't think there's any two ways about that. Whether it's affected a ton, I'm not necessarily sure because a lot of these rules were kind of in place at Utah and BYU because they're different universities than everywhere else. So it'll be really interesting to see how all this kind of works out. But if recruiting does kind of suffer a little bit, someone like Kyle Whittingham is not going to lose his step. He is one of the best coaches in the country and develops talent as good as anyone. So uh, he's someone that could definitely ride out a wave of not necessarily the best recruiting in the world. So overall, um, I tend to believe, I tend to agree with the sponsor of this bill that states should not be the ones handling NIL, or at least they should not be the ones long-term handling NIL. There has to be uniform laws across the entirety of college football, and whether that's the federal government getting involved, as I've said, I don't necessarily think that's happening anytime soon, but um, or a new governing body for college football, whatever that looks like. There needs to be common sense, you know, wide-reaching laws uh, that kind of cover NIL because if there isn't, kids are going to get taken advantage of. You're going to lose fans to this kind of professionalized model that it's slowly becoming in college sports you're gonna have more kids transferring you're gonna have a ton of horror stories of kids signing deals and not understanding what the deal is and losing money um so there's a lot of different things that could happen in this wild west that we live in so i guess at least utah got some type of hat on all of this it's got some type of a thing to stop the flooding that was happening around the NIL world, but at the end of the day, until a real governing body, a uniform governing body around college football steps up and makes some common sense decisions around uh, NIL, then nothing's really going to change in my eyes. There's still going to be all these problems around it, so the second we have those rules, those comprehensive rules across all conferences, I think we're off and rolling uh, with NIL, but for the time being, it doesn't look like we're remotely close <laughs> to that. So uh, we'll keep writing that out. We hope that uh, either more states follow Utah's lead or hopefully uh, a governing body steps up and kind of uh, creates that structure for everyone. But we're going to take another break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the 2025 recruiting cycle. There are a ton of kids in high school that are just wildly talented in this group. This is a really, really good uh, recruiting class, so want to get y'all updated as quickly as possible on what's going on early in the 2025 cycle. So stick around, and we will be right back. 